Amid the bustling streets of Paris sits one very important building, number 55, Rue du Faubourg Saint-Honoré, better known as the Elysee Palace. 11,000 square metres of offices and apartments, two hectares of gardens, 900 staff on the payroll, and one key figure at the head, the French president. The building was constructed in 1718 by the architect Armand Claude Molly. The Elysee was constructed during the Age of Enlightenment for the Count of Evreux. It represents the transition between the monarchy and the republic. It's an extraordinary place because there are as many rooms inside as there are days of the year. In 300 years, these rooms have seen several transformations. The building was constructed in the reign of Louis XV, who gave it to his mistress, the Marquise de Pompadour. She imposed her own particular and lavish style, marking a rebirth in decorative arts. The walls were gilded in gold, like here in the green room, the future office of the French president. The Elysee Palace had lots of different lives. Many don't know that it was lived in by Napoleon I. It became an imperial palace because he didn't like the royal palace in the Tuileries gardens. His one-year-old son lived there too. It was also the palace of the imperial prince Murat, who built the so-called honor staircase. The family tree of the Murat is still growing strong. Joachim Murat is the eighth prince to carry the name. He's a descendant of the imperial marshal who revamped the Elysee Palace which had become a little worse for wear after so many parties. On the 6th of August, 1805, Napoleon I, his brother-in-law, gave him the keys to the Elysee with a financial advance so that he could buy it. Murat was a Republican king himself in Naples. He made Naples a kingdom free from feudalism and a really democratic kingdom. That was all part of his makeup. The presidents of future democratic republics in France would all live here afterwards. Joachim's ancestor ordered a colossal overhaul of the palace. When Murat and his wife Caroline Bonaparte, the sister of the emperor, bought the Elysee, they turned it into an emblem of the empire. It was in great need of renovation, and that's what they set out to do in a very elegant and modern fashion. The building was then given the official title of palace. The first French president to live here moved in in the 1870s. The fact that the republic took on a leftover from the monarchy worked very well. François Mitterrand said that without these outdated gildings, there wouldn't be enough grandeur. President de Gaulle, on the other hand, found that it didn't have enough grandeur. He thought that it was just the home of the mistress Madame de Pompadour. He thought that it wasn't noble enough. He even thought of moving to Les Invalides or to Vincennes. But de Gaulle gave in, and the palace became the centre of his presidency. When I was a child, I lived at number 12, Rue de l'Elysée. And from our balcony, you could see all the comings and goings, all the beds being taken out and all the desks going in. And then people got to work. Today, the Elysée's head chef is catering for a special guest, Queen Elizabeth II. Protocol is rigorous. A gap of exactly 32 centimetres must be kept between each plate. You take the corner of your apron, and put it in the middle of the plate. I need to slightly adjust these ones. Knives and forks are laid out upside down to show off the coat of arms. The palace's basement houses 500 square meters of kitchens. Here we go, last course. In a restaurant, it's always the customer who adapts to the chef. We always say to the diners that in order to make great food, you have to wait. It's the chef who decides when the meal is ready. But for us, it's the other way around. When the president says now, it has to be now. And when he says it's not now, well, it's not now. And just now, he decided that it's not now. Almost 80,000 meals are prepared each year at the Elysee Palace. Head chef Guillaume Gomez is almost part of the fixtures and fittings. 
He's been cooking up dishes for heads of state and royalty ever since the days of President Chirac, and always with the same passion. Since 1991, the gardens at the Elysee Palace have been having a makeover. New plants, flower beds and fountains have all been installed. When the president is not in town, the gardeners can really get to work. The president has been away today, so we've been able to work right across the grounds, even to the outer perimeter. These are grounds that President Hollande suggested opening to the public on the first Sunday of every month. The word Elysee translates as a resting place for the happy. Many people have been happy here, but half of the presidents have been unhappy. Over the years, French heads of state have all come and gone with the changing tide of public opinion. But the Elysee Palace remains as a living testament to the history of France.